So today we've got our microcontroller that we got in the mail uh, and we're going to try to do something useful with it. And our first step, we're going to try to measure an analog voltage. But because we don't have a multimeter to play with, first we need to build a multimeter that will help us measure an analog voltage and understand what's going on. So let's start off with the potentiometer that we also got in the mail. Now, inside the potentiometer is connecting from this pin to that pin is a big resistive element, a big resistor, so that there's a voltage drop from there to there if current's flowing. And the middle pin here is connected to a wiper that can move back and forth across that resistor. So if I connected, say, three volts here and connected that to ground, then the voltage on the wiper will be somewhere in between three volts and ground, three and zero. If the wiper's all the way over at this end, it'll be at three volts. And if it's all the way down at this end, it'll be at zero volts. And if this resistor is well made, then as we move it along there, we'll move from three volts down to zero volts. So we'd like to be able to put this potentiometer onto our microcontroller so that that middle pin that's gonna have a variable voltage goes into one of the analog to digital converter pins. And we'll probably use uh, ADC A1. They're numbered from A0 up to A5. And we're gonna connect this pin to A0 and that one to A2. And then we can force A2 to three volts and force A0 to ground and A1 will be whatever it's gonna be in between. So let's get set up to do this. There's our microcontroller. There's the A0 pin, A1 and A2. We'll take the potentiometer and we'll plug it in so that the pins line up and go into the sockets in the breadboard, A0, A1 and A2. When we turn the knob on the potentiometer, you can see the little arrows moving there. We're moving the wiper on the potentiometer from one end to the other, back and forth across that resistor. So we can go from fully at one end to fully at the other end. And I'm not sure which end is which. We'll have to find that out when we test things. So now we've wired up the simplest possible circuit we can have. I'm gonna plug the microcontroller in with the USB cable and attach it to my computer. And, I'm going to press the reset button twice, and that puts it in a nice receptive state. So it's getting ready. It'll be ready to receive some information from the, uh, from the Arduino IDE that we're going to use to program it. And now I'm going to start up the Arduino IDE. This is an integrated development environment. It lets us write some code that gets the microcontroller to do something. That's the big code that I wrote to act like a multimeter and do a lot of things. We're gonna start some fresh code with a new sketch of our own. So under setup, we're gonna put in things that only need to happen once. And in the loop, we're gonna put in things that we want to have running over and over again repeatedly. So to start off, we always need to set up our serial port so that we can actually see what we're printing. So serial port, begin, and the speed I usually use is 115, 200 baud, which is fast, but uh, doable by just about every piece of hardware. And then I'm going to put into the loop 
serial print and I'll put in call to the millis function and I'll make that print out with a full line so it'll go to the next line every time. I'll hit the arrow key here to send that to the microcontroller and run it. And let's see what happens. It's uploading, it's uploaded, and it should now be running. And if I hit the serial monitor, that's the number of milliseconds that have gone by since the controller started running. So that's good. It's doing what we want it to do. So let's try printing out something more interesting than just the number of milliseconds. We want to get an analog value. So let's take a variable. We'll make it an integer variable and we'll call it A and we'll set it equal to whatever we get back from analog read of pin A1 was the one we attached to the middle of the potentiometer. So we've got a value A that's A1, the analog read value from A1, and let's print it out. And I'll just make a separate one for the whole new line. So now if I run that one, hope it wants me to save it somewhere. I'll just put it on the desktop. Oh, I made an error. Well, let's not worry about errors. That's how we catch mistakes is by getting error messages. So I needed to say serial print that new line character. Now I'm just getting big numbers here. That's because I didn't put a space in between the milliseconds value and what I got from uh, the analog read. So maybe we better do a better printing job here. Instead of doing that, I'm going to use the printf command. And to make that work, I'll have to include a library called rtc.h. So I'm going to print a formatted line that has first a, uh, let's make it a, I don't know, a, a, a 10 place thing with a, digit there for, for an integer value, and then a space, and then another value that we read from our analog read. So that's, we'll give that, I don't know, five digits. And then we'll put a new line at the end, and we're gonna print millis, and we're going to print the A value and then I can get rid of that part there. Maybe RTC lib. I need to check one of my other sketches and make sure I've got the right thing. 
Oh, there we go, rtclib.h, right there. So we can't always remember everything, but we can usually find out the answer. And the error messages always help us along the way. So what am I getting now? Here's my milliseconds value. And here's my analog read value. And we'll notice that it's typically around 400, although it is jumping around a little bit. Now, if I go and turn the knob on the potentiometer, I'm not seeing any change at all. Why would that be? I didn't set up the voltages that I needed in order to be able to get the output on A2 and A0 that's going to form the high voltage and the low voltage for the, uh, for the potentiometer. So I'm just getting kind of a random number there. So we need to make sure that we've got the a2 port set high. So I'm going to set the pin mode of pin A2. Uh, and I will make that an output pin. And I will then do a digital write to pin A2 with a high voltage value. Then I will make sure I have pin mode of A0, also set to output. And I will do a digital write to pin A0, and I'll set pin A0 at a low value. Maybe that'll solve my problem. Let's check. Okay, so now I'm getting my millis value here, my millisecond data values. And I'm getting a number that's typically around 730, 734, 735. It's jumping up and down a little bit, but it's staying pretty steady. And if I turn the potentiometer one way, it goes up. And if I turn the potentiometer the other way, it goes down goes down to almost zero and it goes up to a little more than a thousand. So let's put it in the middle somewhere. By default, our analog read is using 10 bits of resolution when it's reading that data. If we'd like it to use more resolution, we're going to have to set the analog resolution to something higher. Analog read resolution. Well, it's set to 10. Let's make it 16, make it as big as we possibly can. So notice that we're getting about 760 there, about three quarters of the way up the scale. And see what we get at 16. We're getting about 49 there, 49,000. And if we go down, we go down to a relatively small number under 1,000. And if we go up, we go up to a number well over 60,000, up to about 64,000. So 16 bits of resolution, 2 to the 16th is 
65,000 and some odd. So this is our resolution. We're getting 16 bits of resolution there, even if the hardware can't do that full resolution. Let's see what happens if we put 12 in there instead of 16. So now we're getting a value that's about 1700. And it'll go down closer to zero or up to a little over 4000. Two to the 12th is 4096. So that makes a certain amount of sense. So two to the 10th is 1024. Two to the 12th is 4096. Two to the 16th is 65,536, I think, if I remember correctly. So it's scaling by the bit resolution that we're setting. Now, I'd like to set the resolution to 16 all the time. And if the hardware won't give us the full capability of that 16-bit resolution, at least it'll give us numbers that are on that scale. So 16-bit resolution. Now, how are we gonna convert that number into a voltage? If it's going from down near zero at a value that's coming from analog read of about zero and going up to a value that's nearly 64,000 uh, when we get up to 3.3 .3 volts, which is the power supply to our Arduino, to our, to our itsy bitsy then we should, we could at least hope that it's a linear behavior. So let's get some other numbers here. Let's get, uh, uh, a value for a max and we'll make that two raised to the power uh, 16. Okay, and let's print A and A max just to see what we get. I'm hoping that A max is gonna come out to be 65,000 and something. Whoops, and we would need to include a formatter in there as well for it. So it uploads and what do we get? 65536, so that's the two to the 16th. So if we had a 16 bit number, we could go from zero up to 6, 65,535. So the actual maximum we can get is one less than two to the 16th because we've got numbers that go from zero up to something. So we've got that and Let's get a double value for voltage and it'll be equal to whatever the analog read value was divided by a max and then times 3.3. And we'll print out, also we're gonna print out V then. So now we need a formatter for a double precision floating point value. So we'll go, let's say, let's say we go 6.3 F. So that'll give us 
millivolts. Let's go, let's go even one further. Let's go 6.4 or maybe 7.4 in our formatting so that we get millivolts and one tenth of a millivolt as well, just so that we can keep track of what's going on. I run that. I'm getting zero for my voltage. Something's going horribly wrong here. How can that happen? The voltage is equal to A divided by A max. So if A is a number like 64,000 and A max is a number like 65,000, then that should be a number like 0.9 something. Oh, hang on, both of these are integers. Both of these are integer values. So an integer divided by an integer gives an integer result. So a number divided by a number that's larger than it is, if they're just integers, it'll give a result of zero times 3.3 is still zero. So let's cast one of these as a floating point number to make sure that it does the division using floating point division. So I'll make A a double and we'll run it. And now we're getting a voltage value that's close to what we expect. We're up close to 3.3 volts. So that's good. A better way to manage that one might be to start right off by saying that the number we're going to get that we're going to use is our scaling value. Let's make that one a double. Then we really don't need to worry about this. And we should still get the numbers that we're looking for. Oh, except if a max is a double, then we'd better have the right format code here because it's trying to format that floating point number as if it was an integer. So let's make that again uh, 8.1 F. So we've got a floating point version of our, our maximum now. We're getting that value there and we're getting something that looks like it might be a voltage coming out the other side. That makes a certain amount of sense. And let's adjust the potentiometer. And sure enough, it goes down. So now we've succeeded in generating a variable voltage, reading it in as an analog value, and converting that value into a floating point value of voltage that seems to match up with what we think is actually happening electrically in the circuit. So let's try expanding that. Let's try doing that on a couple more ports. Uh, We've got A1 as the variable A and we're converting it there. Let's do another one for uh, A3. So I'm gonna copy the same stuff here. And I'll make A3 equal to analog read from A3. I don't need to redefine A max because we've already got it once. And I'll calculate V3 equal to A3 over A max times 3.3. So the same calculation. And now I'll also put out the value V3.
And let's see what happens now. Okay, so V3, it's varying quite a bit, and it's in the middle of the range. It's not nearly as stable as the value on port number one. And why is that? That's because nothing's connected to pin A3 over here. So I better get a wire and make a connection. So I'll plug that into the input for A3. And now I can connect it to something else. Well, let's start off by connecting it to A1 so that it should have the same input voltage as pin A1. And sure enough, those two numbers look like they're very close to exactly the same. So that's reassuring. Now I'll take it over here and I'll plug it into the ground pin. And it's going to a number very, very close to zero. So that's reassuring. And if I plug it into the plus three volt pin over here, I'm getting a number that's very close to 3.3 volts. So that's giving me a considerable amount of reassurance about the behavior of these analog input pins. Now I can plug it back into A1. And if I turn the potentiometer knob, I see both of those voltage values are going up and down the same way. Now it's important to note that these voltage values, these are all relative to ground. Now, when we want to measure DC voltage, a lot of the time we want to measure the difference between two voltage values rather than the absolute voltage relative to a reference. So if we want to emulate a multimeter, we need to be able to measure the difference between the voltage on two different input ports, maybe A3 and A4. And that's going to be where we go with our next exercise.